Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Um, we have a public hearing this morning to consider the adoption of the 2019 operating budget and the 2019 capital budget plan. Uh, I'd ask the town clerk to please read the hearing notice. Good morning. Notice is hereby given that the preliminary operating and capital budgets of the town of Islip for fiscal year beginning January 1, 2019, have been completed and filed in the office of the town clerk at Town Hall, Islip, New York. Further notice is hereby given that the town board of the town of Islip will hold a public hearing at Town Hall, 655 Main Street, Islip, New York, at 10.30 a.m. on the 8th day of November 2018 to consider oper adopting the 2019 operating and capital budgets. At such times, all citizens are invited to attend and provide the town board with written and oral comments concerning the town's entire proposed budget. The entire proposed operating budget can be inspected by the public from 8.30 a.m. until 5 p.m. Monday through Friday in the town clerk's office in town hall. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, so at this time, anyone who wishes to address the board uh, specifically on either the operating budget or the capital budget may do so. You'll have three minutes. Uh, and again, just to remind you, it is just basically on the budget. That's all this meeting is about today. So uh, we do have one card uh, that has been signed, Greg Pepe. Uh, Greg Pepe, Islip, New York. Uh, I'd like to bring to the attention of the taxpayers of Islip that when uh, Team Croce took the helm here in Islip, uh, we were increased automatically uh, up 20%. If we tally up between 2013 and the projected 5.3% in our town taxes alone, we went up a total of 53.3 percent. You know, and then I'm being told that it depends how you look at this figure. But these percentage rates of increase, they don't go away. They just get kept on the books, on our tax rolls, and it keeps getting increased. And I think it's outrageous when I see on Channel 12 News that our supervisor uh, compares this to a couple of lattes at Starbucks. Well, to a senior citizen's say, uh, husband and wife that needs to meet a three-hour copay every month for prescription drugs, uh, it's more than just a latte to these people. So I think that's outrageous. And then you're giving yourself a 2% raise, and the rest of the board is going up to. Uh, how do you do, you do that on the backs of the taxpayers, okay? You need money, but yet you're still in your own pockets would increase in salary. I mean, think about that. Where are these people, these working people, and to hold these meetings at 10.30 in the morning, I had already scheduled my whole day just to, to make it here. But I think it's important that the people realize how we're being ripped off, period. Squandering thousands of dollars, putting in parking spaces in Isle Hammond that don't meet state regulation, and Clash should tell me, oh, what's a little paint? What's a little paint and he spends uh, how many thousands of dollars to fence man ink to put these lines in that you can't even fit a vehicle in between? Okay, so you know you should be looking where you're spending the money and how you're wasting the taxpayers' money. <coughs> so I can talk here until I'm blue in the face, but when we, when we really look at this, we don't need any blue waves. We need a tidal wave to hit next November and change the whole concept of the Isle Town Board. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pepe. Um, just uh, to clarify uh, the record, um, it is not a 5% increase in your taxes. Um, you know, sometimes the headlines can be a little mis misleading, sometimes, um, and people see 5.3% and they assume it's a 5.3% increase over their total tax bill and say their tax bill is ten thousand dollars a year a five percent tax increase would be five hundred dollars what we're proposing here is a modest increase of twenty eight dollars for the year 
And I'm going to ask our uh, controller, Joe Ludwig, who worked with all of our departments to help put this budget together to please come forward and give us an overview. And I just ask everyone to um, draw their attention to the pie chart that we have in the front of the room that delineates where your tax dollar goes. And if you will see, the three portions of the pie that are the smallest are the ones that apply to the town. And there are three different taxing jurisdictions, one being the general fund, one being the highway fund, and the other being the villages, so uh, the town outside villages. So, um, Joe, if you would, please give us a brief Reader's Digest version of what we have before us today. Sure. Uh, Joseph Ludwig, controller for the town of Isa, 401 Main Street. Okay, Morning, Madam Supervisor, members of the town board. Um, Madam Supervisor, as you mentioned, the 5.3% increase is what we refer to as the three major funds, and that covers the predominant portion of all the services that the residents get. It's our snow plowing, it's our road maintenance, it's our parks, it's our beaches, it's our pools. That's the number that went up 5.3%, which equates to about $28 to the average homeowner. It's important to stress that this budget that you guys have before you right now, came here, sorry. Is that better? It's just right straight into the microphone. How's that? No. No? Is it on? It's on. It's on, you just gotta talk into it. Sorry, I'm not used to Thank that. you. I'm a numbers guy, I apologize. Um, this, this budget you have before you though, it is important to stress that it is tax cap compliant. The 2% tax cap is a giant misnomer because it's not just a flat 2%. It's 2% or the rate of inflation, whichever is less, adjusted for a whole slew of things that the state has allowed municipalities to go up and down by. Simplistically put, it was not a flat 2% this year. We had about 2.65% ability to go up and we went up 26 on our overall tax levy. And that covers all the jurisdictions that the town board is in charge of, all the special districts as well as the three major funds that we talked about earlier. Um, a lot of times you'll hear people say that the town needs to look at where the money is being spent and how it's being spent. And all I can say is that this is a very responsible budget. Um, unfortunately, there are no new initiatives. This is just a status quo budget. We're not laying anybody off. We're not cutting any services to any of the departments or to the residents. But unfortunately, we don't have the ability to grow and do new services that we would love to do. You guys have the tough task of trying to balance a tax levy, and nobody wants to pay taxes. But the unfortunate part is we need those tax monies to pay for the basic services that we get. Um, this overall budget went up by $5.6 million. Just slightly half of that increase is what's getting covered by the increase in taxes. So between increased revenues and the increased use of reserves, we've been able to offset the total impact to the residents. Um, you know, that is the 40,000 foot view of the budget. I will bore everybody else, but I would love to talk about this stuff all day long. Um, but if there's any questions directly from the board, I'd be more than happy to answer. Um, I have a question. So. Joe, in short, what you're saying is that we're not piercing the tax cap. We are not piercing the cap. Um, we are under the cap, just under the cap, I will stress, but it is under the cap. We are tax cap compliant. Um, and it is, it turns out, to about $20 to the average homeowner. Thank you. There are some of the things um, that we were able to accomplish that I think is important to note. Um, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm going by some of my notes that we retired in 18, we retired $17.5 million worth of debt. And in this budget, we are retiring $18.8 .8 .8 million worth of debt. That's correct. And that's an important thing to know so that we're not really taking on much more debt than we're retiring. So it's, it's keeping us in a good position and it enables us to maintain, which has just been recently reaffirmed by the rating agencies, our AAA bond rating. And Part of the increase, too, for this year was the fact that we appropriated the, the money or the authorization for the animal shelter and the final completion of the project at the Bayshore Marina. Correct. Um, some of the other things, again, uh, we settled contracts with blue collar, white collar. Um, so there was an increase due to the increased salary of the contractual obligations that actually the, the town board adopted unanimously, so I think that's 
important for everyone to know. Uh, just like everyone else at home, we struggle with utilities going up, and last year we had an increase of $200,000 in utilities, and we are looking at every possible way we can to minimize some of those increase with energy efficient lighting and uh, other initiatives that the uh, Department of Public Works and Parks is working on. Um, the ongoing maintenance services, capital projects, we have 58 town operated facilities and properties that unfortunately were left untouched for years. This year we were finally able to pave Washington Avenue uh, and that's a main thoroughfare going from Suffolk Avenue up to the Long Island Expressway. That road had not been touched in over 30 years. And many, many more roads across the town from the west to the east, um, north and south, have been addressed and hadn't been in many years. And there are still some, if anybody's out there listening, well, they didn't get to my road, and, and that's probably true. But we're trying to be equitable. We're trying to go to the, not just trying, but we are. Uh, addressing it very equitably, trying to get to the roads that are worst first. Uh, but we encourage you to report any roads. We've got 1,200 miles of road in this town. Uh, and again, for many, many years, they were not maintained properly. Um, and also, too, it, it really bears repeating the fact that we were able to get Roberto Clemente Park open this year, that we were able to reopen the pool, uh, creating a beautiful um, really oasis for our residents to use at Clemente Park. Uh, we're moving forward with the skate park and the spray park. Um, and our initiatives with economic development have been very, very fruitful and successful in that we were able to retain over a thousand jobs last year, creating 600 new jobs in the town. Um, we've had new service in, um, provided at uh, Long Island MacArthur Airport. We now have free Wi-Fi at the airport. Um, the planning department has been incredibly engaged and very, very busy. Uh, they've uh, adopted a pre-application intake review process to help streamline, because this is a problem we have. There's a lot, a lot of applications in the planning department. People want to come and do business in the town of Islip. And uh, they've looked at that and have initiated some strategies to make the process more streamlined. You know, public safety last year responded to over 12,000 calls, um, and they have successfully hosted the first of its kind peace officer training. We were able to do that in-house. Uh, we're looking at security measures in our parks, given the um, increase of crime in some of the areas of the town. We're not sitting by idly. Uh, public safety is taking it very, very seriously as this town board is. We want our residents to be safe. And all of this comes with a cost. And an increase of $28 a year is what, you know, we're proposing here this year. Joe, anything? Yeah, I just want to stress, and it kind of dovetails off of what Mr. Pepe had brought up. And, and I'm not arguing with his numbers, so let's say 53% is the overall increase. What we need to keep in mind, though, is that before um, Supervisor Croce took office, this town went 14 of the previous 16 years without a tax increase at all. So if you just equate that to your own personal homes, it's going to be hard to still to pay for the services that you've been getting, the groceries and everything else, if you've not had a raise in 14 out of the previous 16 years. And in essence, that's what the town had to do, had to provide the same services using the same dollar from 14 years earlier. And unfortunately, that's just a recipe for disaster. So unfortunately, when Supervisor Croce came in, we did have a significant tax increase. We have had a few smaller increases thereafter, but that's just kind of trying to get the town back into the good financial position, which we've been able to do, and that's how we got that AAA rating that you referred to before. Thank you, certainly. Uh, Councilman O'Connor. Controller Ludwig, um, the problem I have found with municipal financing is that it doesn't fit neatly into a soundbite. To really understand it, you really need to get down into the weeds and really get into it. And right. so people see a headline that says 5.3%, and they react to that because that's the soundbite. Um, you and I met, and you briefed me on this budget, 
and you assured me that it's underneath the tax cap, which you said this year is 2.65 percent, right? You adjusted for the town, correct? So explain to me, but really more to the benefit of the public, the disunion there and the disharmony there, and that um, it's being represented to me that it's less than the tax cap, or less than 2.65 percent. Mm -hmm. And yet, three days later, after our briefing, I pick up the newspaper and a number jumps out at me that says 5.3 percent. Explain that so that so I can understand it, but more importantly, so that the people I represent can understand it. Sure. So the 2.65 percent that I referred to earlier, that covers every taxing jurisdiction that the town board has purview over. So it's the general fund, it's the part town fund, it's the highway fund, but it also includes all our special districts, our street lighting districts, our erosion control districts, and everything else that you guys have the responsibility for. The tax cap is based on the overall tax levy of the town, so you have to incorporate all of those special districts. When I had the conversations and the interviews with Newsday and also with Channel 12, when the supervisor had that, we've always referred to the three major funds. Again, as noted on the chart over there, that's the general fund, the town outside village, and the highway fund. And that predominantly takes care of 90% of the services that the residents uh, receive from the town. And historically, that has always been the three funds that the town has referred to. So those three funds went up 5.3%. But the budget we're improving today includes all of those special districts, including the document that I have before me, all the protection control districts and street lighting right. districts and every other district that is incorporated in this budget, which allows this budget to be represented as tax cap compliant. You are correct. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Um, I do, I have another question. Mary Kay, do you have a question? No? Um, Joe, I don't even know if you can answer this, or maybe it's a, a question better suited for um, our personnel director, uh, Arthur Abadi, um, but you probably have a good handle on this. Um, I think that we're starting to, to realize the benefits of our workforce re going into retirement and younger people coming in and taking jobs that are on the ground level mm -hmm. uh, a little less expensive for us to maintain. Can you just talk to that a little bit and are we already seeing that benefit or is that a benefit that we'll start to recognize next year? It's a benefit we recognize every year. There's always a certain number of retirees or people who just moved on to greener pastures where we're able to replace that position at either a cheaper value or we don't, sometimes we don't replace it at all. Um, so that is always factored in with inside of every budget. There is a philosophy out there that allows you to predict what that is going to be. The problem is that if your prediction is wrong, I now don't have funds to pay your salary or my salary or somebody else's. So don't really look at it that way. So very often what will happen is if there is um, that savings from a higher level position to a low level position, clearly the town has savings. It just means it's less reserves that we had to use out of our bank account, so to speak. And you know the town is then still able to continue to function. And then we'll see that benefit in the subsequent year's budget. OK, thank you. OK. Uh, Can you have a quick question? Certainly. Can't so, um, real quick, uh, you, uh, you meant, just mentioned the uh, special districts. Um, after Sandy, we've had the uh, Army Corps of Engineers re, um, I guess they dredged the ocean and we've got 15 foot dunes now from uh, the lighthouse all the way down the beach. Why do we, uh, and we were trying to consolidate special districts, why are we still carrying erosion districts if the federal government and the state government just re dredged and we did all our beaches over at Fire Island? So the redredging project, uh, the FEMI project as it's called, repaired the dunes as you correctly stated. However, the maintenance of the dunes is borne by the erosion control districts. So as we have seen, and the reason for that dredging project is Mother Nature is not always kind to those beaches. So unfortunately, there's probably still going to be some sort of erosion. And the communities out there will do the best they can between snow fencing and beach grass to help prevent that erosion. Mm -hmm. So that's why we still have those budgets within the budget. So they still have that ability in case they need to make adjustments. Their budgets as a result, however, for 2019 and hopefully for the foreseeable future have been significantly reduced because the amount of money they're gonna have to spend for maintenance ideally should be reduced for a while. Thank you. And hopefully Mother Nature's nice to us and reduce forever. Are there any more questions? Are we just talking about the budget here, or we, we, uh, are we is the capital plan on the They're table? two separate votes. But yeah, if you have any questions on the capital, again, it is a plan. Uh, any of those projects will be coming back 
to us to well, be appropriated, but uh, we haven't heard which, anything about it. So can you tell us on the capital about budget? The capital plan? Um, um, so the capital plan you have in front of you, again, as the supervisor alluded to, it is just a plan. Um, these are just the list of the projects and equipment that different departments are expecting to need in 2019. It does not mean that we're going to borrow for everything that's in here. There will be another wrap at the apple, as we say, when bond resolutions are prepared for the town board, and that'll be done sometime in the spring, I would imagine. Um, but for the most part, our 2019 capital budget is very similar to 2018 capital budget in the sense that it's the same stuff year in, year out. Nothing fun, nothing exciting. It's maintaining our roads, it's replacing our equipment, facility improvements, things of that nature. Within this budget, there is one outside the norm project, and that is for the repairs that are gonna be needed for the Bayshore Highway Yard earlier this year due to some snow, and Commissioner Owens can talk to more detail about that. Um, there were structural issues, integrity of the building was compromised. The building has not been occupied by the town since January, February, I forget exactly when. So obviously the town is gonna to have to put money back into that facility to make it useful. That is a new item that's in this budget that is outside the norm. The other project that is outside the norm is uh, there's a $5 million for a West Concourse expansion design. Um, and again, Commissioner uh, Rose Arkin can talk more if there's better detailed questions that you need. But simplistic as put, the federal government has opened up some stimulus money to target second tier airports of which Long Island MacArthur is one. The hope is that we will have this design study done in time so that we can tap into some of that billion dollar surplus money. They're looking for shovel ready projects. The time frame that the commissioner of the airport has told me is that if we can, which is why it's included in the budget, is that if we can get that money funded in the spring, the design should be ready in time for an application made to the federal government so we can do a $50 million expansion to allow airlines such as Frontier and any other airlines that may come in have a better uh, location for their planes to park, for lack of a better term, as well as for the airline passengers to hopefully have a more comfortable and convenient flying experience. With respect to Long Island MacArthur Airport, it's two separate capital programs, one with respect to the West Concourse and one with respect to the main terminal. Is that correct? Correct. It was $5 million so the for the concourse. West Concourse is $5 million, $1 million for the terminal. Correct. And, and you use the term shovel ready. Now, the federal government is making funds available for projects that are shovel ready. By definition, shovel ready means you have to do the design work in advance before you can be determined to be shovel ready. Is that exactly. Right? Yes. And that's what the, the request in this year's, in 2019 capital plan is for. The, so the five million and the one million are not for any construction itself, it's for the actual design. Correct. So that then you can go to the federal government to make avail who has made available these funds to try and get grant money to help us if, if we want to pursue these projects. That's correct. Joe, ultimately, would we get reimbursed for that money that we are um, proposing in the capital budget for the airport? Um, I would have to go back to look at my notes. I do believe these projects might be PFC eligible. Yeah. yeah. Hey, good for me. Um, yeah, so <laughs> the debt service on it, um, when the next application goes into the PFC, um, the airport will make the application to request that PFC funds are used to pay back the debt service. So ultimately, the entire project will be funded through grant money. Thank you. So the only new initiatives then, the, the, the three, are one is to address um, a, a problem that developed as a result of environmental conditions that we have to improve because where are the guys in the Bayshore Yard going to go uh, if there's no building for them to go to? Exactly. Uh, the other two are design projects for the airport to make improvements in, and new construction at the airport. And in order to do that, we have to, I mean, I'm sorry, in order to leverage federal funds to do that, we have to do these design programs. Exactly. And again, to be stressed, the design programs ultimately, we hope, and should be funded through another grant program. So ultimately, no cost to the town. Thank you. Um, we do have that card now. Um, and friends, you name and address for the record, please. The microphone to the right. Thank you. 21 Willow Street, Bayport, New York. And my question is really to the controller who I thought was going to explain what I wanted to know. The $28 that he refers to, how does that pay per thousand per 
of your evaluation of your house. I'm here with my husband, I'm, uh, we're 70 year old plus people, and we have a son who has moved into town, just has his third child, and he has an investment in this area. And he said to me, Ma, I can't leave work to go to the meeting. Can you find out why I'm going to have a thousand dollar increase in my oh, taxes? That's what he thought. Well, unfortunately. I understand a little different now, but when you all say it's a $28 increase for the average taxpayer, average. and if an average taxpayer is paying 15,000 taxes, and um, now they don't even get to claim more than 10,000 of that, and they're losing out that way, what does it mean for somebody who's paying 15, 16,000 dollars? I'll use 15,000 as a as an average figure. What does that person pay for your increase? I need to go home and tell him this. Okay, uh, probably the only person that can tell you exactly what that might be would be the assessor. But Joe, do you want to come up and see if you can? Um, that twenty, you know, that he thought it was a thousand is just—it really breaks my heart to hear that. And that's what happens when, unfortunately, and I'm not going to say it's the reporter because more times than not, it's the headline writer, and the headline needs to be sensational. And the way that headline read, it looked like if you had a $10,000, it was going up 5.3% or $15,000. So I can understand his frustration, but please, That's it's an average, right, it's an average of $28 based on your assessed valuation. For some people, it's going to be less than $28. It may be $20. For some people, it may be 30, 35, but I, I can't say with any specifics exactly what it would be. Joe, can you add anything to that? Sure. Um, so again, the thing to stress when it comes to the, the tax levy is the three major funds that we talk about, the 5% that was specifically mentioned, that covers our three major funds. And again, as it's referenced on the chart, it's the light blue, the dark blue, and the little sliver of yellow. That's what we covered. That's what we're talking about. And that is anywhere between 5 to 7% of your total tax bill. So to use the $15,000 tax bill, and I'm going to be on the hook here doing math in my head, which never works out well for me, um, <laughs> just call that about a $750 town tax that we're referring to. That's the number that's going to go up by 5%. That's the number that's going to go up, in that particular case, a little bit more than the $28. I'm not going to try to do math twice. So maybe 37 Correct. So it's not, it's not a $1,000 increase. We're talking a 5% increase on, again, those smallest slivers within the pie chart to my right. OK. I hope, and I hope that answers your question. Not, not quite, but well, I will well, I'll dig into it more. OK. Thank you very much. Are there any more questions for the controller from the board? Hearing none, I would entertain a motion then to close the public hearing. Take a motion to close the public hearing and adopt the capital budget. We're going to do the. I think we're doing the operating? Operating. Okay. So we have a motion to close the public hearing and adopt the operating budget by Councilman Cochran. Second? Second. Second by Councilman O'Connor. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? It is approved. Uh, next, uh, a motion to <coughs> close the public hearing and adopt the capital budget. Motion. Motion by Councilman O'Connor. Second. Second by Councilwoman Mullen. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? It is approved. That concludes the budget hearing. However, we have two uh, further resolutions to consider this morning uh, for some grants. The first item on the agenda is an authorization for the supervisor to enter into a contract with Laser Industries for DPW 8 2018. That's the Bay Shore Bayway Corridor. Any questions? Uh, I appreciate the fact we were able to get this on the agenda. They really want to get started doing the work, and a couple of weeks could make a difference as the uh, cold weather is upon us. Are there any questions? Hearing none, motion? I'll make a motion to approve. A motion by Councilwoman uh, Second. Bergen, second by Councilman uh, Cochran. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? It is approved. Next item is an approval to access the New York State Department of Transportation's Equitable Business Opportunity System in order to participate in construction, consulting, engineering, or professional services contract awarded by the New York State Department of Transportation or other, other federal aid subrecipients. 
Any questions? Hearing none, motion. Motion. Motion by Councilman Cochran. Second. Second. Second by Councilman Mullen. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed is approved. That concludes the business before the board today. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. By Councilman Bergen. Second. Second. By Councilman Mullen. We stand adjourned. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.